Reef HQ, the National Education Centre for the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. And welcome to our Growing Up on the Reef classroom lesson. My name is Katie, I am an Education Officer here at Reef HQ. Now in today's lesson we're going to have a look at how different animals grow up out on the reef. Sometimes those animals, they'll hatch out of an egg. Sometimes they're born live. Sometimes the parents will look after them, other times they send them on their way straight away. And sometimes they will look just like their parents. But there are some animals that look very, very different when they are born. Now throughout today's lesson, there is a worksheet that you can do as well. So make sure you download that before we get started and follow along as we go. Now we might start with some of the animals that hatch out of eggs. Can you guys think of some animals that are out on the reef that hatch from an egg? There's lots and lots of different ones. Things like sea turtles, crocodiles, fish, and even some types of sharks, like leopard sharks. So we might have a look at each of these animals and see how they grow up on the reef. Let's start with sea turtles today. I love sea turtles. How about you? Yeah? All right, let's have a look then. Now sea turtles, they spend a lot of their time on the reef growing up. They become adults when they're around about 20 to 50 years old. That's pretty old, isn't it? And what they're going to do, they're going to go back to the same area that they themselves were hatched from. And that is where they'll lay their own eggs. So the females, they're going to haul themselves up onto the beach at night time and dig herself a nest. She's then going to lay lots of eggs, about 100 to 120, and then back down into the water by the time the sun comes up. She'll do this a number of times throughout the breeding season, laying lots and lots of eggs. How many eggs do you think a sea turtle can lay in a single season? Did anyone guess a thousand? Because that's how many she can lay. That's a lot of eggs, isn't it? But she doesn't look after those eggs when she's laid them. She lays her nest and then she swims away. Those eggs, those babies are all on their own. Now about six to 12 weeks after those eggs are laid, they do start to hatch. And those little baby turtles, they look just like their parents. They have a head, they have a shell, they've got those flippers as well. But they are very, very small. They're about the size of the palm of my hand. When they hatch out of their eggs, they scurry on down the beach and out into open water. They'll head out into really deep water where it's the safest place for them to be. They'll grow up for about 10 or 15 years out in that nice deep water before they come back into coastal areas, grow up a bit more and start that whole cycle all over again. So turtles, they are pretty cool. Now turtles are one of the animals that is on our worksheet today. So if we all have a look at our worksheet, let's see if we can try and answer the questions about turtles. So the first question is, are turtles born from an egg or are they born live? What do you guys think? Exactly, they are born out of an egg. Now, do they look like their parents when they are born? They do, they are just very, very small. And what about their parents? Do they look after them? while they are in the eggs or after they hatch. Perfect, no they don't. Those juveniles have to look completely after themselves. Now we might have a look at another animal now. We might move on to our leopard shark. So some types of sharks are actually hatched from an egg. Leopard sharks are an example of that. We've got a few leopard sharks here at Reef HQ and they keep laying lots and lots of eggs. Now, would anyone like to have a look at a video of a leopard shark laying an egg? Yeah, I do too. Here we go, let's have a look at that video. Now what they'll often do is they're gonna rub those eggs up against something like a rock and hold it in place because those eggs have long strands hanging down from them that will secure them in spot. Because as soon as she lays that egg, that is it. That's her job done. She's going to swim away. That egg is completely on its own. And then about four or five months after that egg's laid, 
those little eggs will start to hatch. Now how cool was that? You got to see one of our leopard sharks here at Reef HQ laying an egg. Now, would anyone like to see what they look like while they're still inside the egg? Because I've got a pretty cool video to show you. Who wants to have a look at that? Yeah, let's have a look. So as I said, about four or five months being inside that egg, they get a bit too big and then they're gonna push themselves out. Now how cool is that? You could see the little baby juvenile leopard shark wiggling around inside that egg. Now, when they hatch, they actually don't look like their parents. Because if you think about a leopard shark, you think about a spotty shark. But when these guys are first born, they're very small. They're also black with white stripes. That's because being black and white helps them to camouflage in the seagrass beds where they grow up while they're quite small. So they look very, very different. But after a little while, she does lose those black and white stripes and she starts to get her spots. And then when she reaches about seven years old, that's when she can start laying eggs herself. So leopard sharks, they are pretty cool. Now, leopard sharks are another one of our animals on our worksheet. Let's look back at our worksheets now and see if we can answer those questions. So let's see, are leopard sharks born out of an egg or are they born live? What do you guys think? Perfect, they are born out of an egg. Now, do those juveniles look like their parents when they're born? No, they don't, because they are black with white stripes instead of being all spotty in color. And do the parents look after those eggs and those juveniles? No, they don't. They do have to look after themselves as soon as they hatch from those eggs. How about we have a look at another animal now. Now this one actually does look after their juveniles. So these are our crocodiles. So crocodiles, they are very, very good parents. What the mum will do, she's actually going to build a nest. And she's going to lay all of her eggs inside that nest. Then guess what? She's going to protect that nest as well. And when those eggs start to hatch, did you know little baby crocodiles make a chirping sound? That helps the mum know that they are hatching. She'll then come along and help dig them out of the, that nest. Now, what she's going to do next is pick them up and put them in her mouth. Would any of you guys like to be inside the mouth of a crocodile? No, I don't think I do either. But when you're a baby crocodile, that's the safest place for you. Because they're very small, they need to be protected from predators. So then the mum is going to take them down to the water's edge and she'll even look after them for a couple of weeks, sometimes a couple of months, until they can look after themselves. When they're big enough to look after themselves, they'll head off on their way. Now, would anyone like to see a video of a little freshwater crocodile swimming around our freshwater exhibit here at Reef HQ? Yeah, I want to see that video too. Here we go. Let's have a look, shall we? So when it comes to crocodiles, they do look just like their parents when they're small, but very, very small. So with crocodiles, they are born out of an egg, because most reptiles are born from eggs. Though parents do look after them, because the mum is really, really good at protecting the eggs and the juveniles. And those juveniles look just like their parents. How cute was that little crocodile? That was our freshwater crocodile swimming around in our freshwater exhibit here at Reef HQ. Now let's move on to most fish that we do find out on the Great Barrier Reef. Most fish, they lay eggs and they release those eggs into the water. So things like water currents will actually spread those eggs quite far. When those fish hatch out of the eggs, they are very, very small and they often don't look like their parents. Let's take a red emperor for example. 
Red emperors, they tend to hang out out on the outer parts of the coral reef, releasing all of their eggs into the water and those water currents spreading those eggs around. They'll often push the eggs back towards the nutrient rich shore. So as they're going towards their shore, those eggs will hatch and those juveniles will start to come on out. They'll head towards that high nutrient rich shore, grow up a little bit, and then they'll start to migrate back out to the coral reef, changing their body shape a little bit as they go and making sure they hang out in lots of different habitats as well. But as I said, most fish, they release those eggs into the water. And most of the time when those juveniles hatch, they look very, very different from their parents. Now it's not just fish that do this, but a lot of other marine animals that release their eggs into the water look very different when they first hatch. So we might have a little bit of a guessing game. I've got a picture here of a juvenile that's just hatched out of an egg. Why don't you guys try and guess and see what you think this might be? Does anyone want to try and guess what it grows up to? Have a think about that. Oh, see I'm not very sure. Why don't we have a look and see what it grows up to? It grows up to a snail. That doesn't look like a snail, does it? But when it grows up, it will eventually become a snail. And that one was a little bit tricky. How about we try a couple of others? So I've got this first one here. Does anyone want to see if they can try and guess what this might be? Oh, I think it kind of looks a little bit like a spider. What do you guys think? Oh, we're not quite sure. Let's have a look. It's a lobster. Did anybody guess a lobster? I don't think it looks very much like a lobster. How about this next one? This one looks almost like a little bit of an alien, don't you think? I'm not sure what this might be. What do you guys think it might be? Does anyone think it's a crab? Because that's what it is. But it doesn't start its life looking like a crab, does it? No. How about this next one that we've got here? Not quite sure what this might be. It's very see-through, don't you think? What do you reckon it might be? How about we have a look, shall we? It's a sea star that looks nothing like a sea star. Oh, these are a little bit tricky. All right, how about this next one here? It's got a couple of spikes on it. I'll give you guys a hint with this one. What's an animal out on the reef that's very, very sea? Spiky. What do we think it might be? Let's have a look, shall we? It's a sea urchin. Did anyone guess a sea urchin? Now I've got one more for you to guess. What do we think this one might be? Ooh, it looks very, very strange. I'm not quite sure what it might be. Let's have a look, shall we? It's a giant clam. Did anyone think that that looked like a giant clam? I don't think it did. But a lot of the times out in the marine environment, as I said, most of those animals, they look very, very different when they are juveniles to when they are adults. So did you know that some marine animals change quite a lot throughout their life? So things like crabs, for example, with those juveniles, they hatch out of an egg. They look like that alien that we saw before. And then because they're a crustacean, which means they have their skeleton on the outside of their body and they have to molt throughout their life. When they're juveniles and when they're molting, they actually change their body shape quite a bit. So they start off as an egg, they go to that alien, then they start to look a little bit more like a crab until eventually after lots and lots of molts, they look just like their parents. But they change quite a bit before they get there. So we've had a look about most fish and a lot of marine animals. Now, have a look at your worksheet because most fish is one of the animals that's on your worksheet. So let's have a think and let's see if we can answer those questions. So have a think. Do most fish hatch out of an egg or are they born live? That's right, they hatch from an egg. And do the parents look after those eggs or the juveniles? No, they don't. Those eggs get released into the water. And when they hatch, do they look like their parents? 
No, they don't. So, they are very, very different. Now, there are some fish, however, that do look after their eggs and some that also look after their juveniles. Let's have a look at some of those, shall we? We might start with clownfish. Who likes clownfish? I know I do. So clownfish are pretty cool. They live within an anemone. And what they do is the female lays her eggs underneath the anemone. That way the anemone can protect them a little bit. But the male, he is a really, really good dad. Because what he's going to do is look after all of those eggs until they hatch. He's going to fan them, he's going to make sure there's no algae or parasites and make sure they're all nice and healthy. But do you think he's going to keep looking after those juveniles once they hatch? No, he doesn't. As soon as those eggs hatch, he says, bye guys, have fun, because then those juveniles are all on their own. And guess what? They don't look anything like a clownfish when they're first born. They're very small and they're transparent, which means they're a little bit see-through. But after a little while, they'll grow up out in that deep water. Then they're going to come back towards the reef and find an anemone of their own. Now, there are also some fish that do look after their juveniles after those eggs hatch. Spiny chromus. They're a type of damselfish, and they're an example of this. We have lots of spiny chromis here at Reef HQ. So what they do is the female lays all of her eggs on a rock. Then both the female and the male, they look after and they protect those eggs. Then unlike a lot of other animals, even after those eggs are hatched, they're going to look after their juveniles until those little juveniles are big enough to look after themselves. So spiny chromis are a really, really good at being parents. So did you know there are also some types of fish that carry their eggs? Seahorses are an example of this because seahorses are actually a type of fish. Now, would anyone like to see a video of a seahorse releasing their eggs from a pouch? Yeah, I do too. I think it's going to be cool. All right, let's have a look, shall we? So what they're going to do is the female, she's going to give all of her eggs to the male. He's got a pouch that he's going to hold those eggs in until they hatch. Once they hatch out of those eggs, he's going to release them into the water. How cool was that? He had lots of tiny little baby seahorses that he released from his pouch. But did you notice? Those seahorses looked just like him, but very, very small. Because when seahorses hatch out of their eggs, they are fully formed seahorses and look just like their parents. Now seahorses are another one of those fish that's on our worksheets. So let's have a look back at our worksheets now and see if we can answer those questions. So let's have a think. Are seahorses born live or do they hatch out of an egg? Now that's a little bit tricky, but they are hatched from an egg. And then those eggs hatch within the father's pouch. And then do the parents look after those juveniles? Again, that's another pretty tricky question because they look after the eggs, but as soon as they hatch, those juveniles are completely on their own. They have to look after themselves. But did those juveniles look like their parents? Yes, they did. They looked just like their parents, but a little bit smaller. Now there's other types of fish as well that don't have pouches, but are able to carry their eggs. Cardinal fish are a type of this. We do also have those here at Reef HQ. Now what they do is the female, again, she gives all of her eggs to the male. Now, as I said, he doesn't have a pouch, so guess what? He's going to carry them in his mouth. He's going to have a mouth full of eggs until they hatch. And since when they hatch, they're very, very small, he'll even keep them in there for a little bit longer until they're big enough to be on their own. 
When he does release them, often he'll release them between the spines of urchins. They're a very spiky type of marine animal. Those long spines that urchins have help to protect those juveniles. But if a predator comes too close, he's going to be a good dad again. He's going to pick up all of his kids and pop them back in his mouth to help protect them. Now we've gone through a few different animals out on the reef that are born from an egg. But there are definitely awesome animals that are born live as well. Do you guys think you know some of those animals that are born live? Have a think, see if you can try and guess some. So there's lots and lots of different reef animals that are born live. Things like sea snakes, black tip reef sharks, and dugongs as well. So how about we have a look at these animals and see how they grow up out on the reef. We'll start with sea snakes. So sea snakes are a type of reptile, which means they do need to breathe air. But unlike most other reptiles, these ones are born live. Most other reptiles do lay eggs. Now when the female gives birth to those juveniles, they are small, but they look just like her. And they also have what's known as a yolk. So it's a food source that they can use right when they're very small before they start hunting for their food. Because as soon as the mum gives birth, that's her job done. She doesn't look after those juveniles. They've got to be able to look after themselves. Now, would you guys like to see a video of a little sea snake that was born here at Reef HQ? Yeah, I do too. Here we go. Let's have a look. Hi people, welcome back to Reef HQ. Now I've got something special here in this tub and you might recall we've had some captive born sea snakes here at Reef HQ that we're really, really excited about. Thought I'd give you a bit of an update. Before I do that though, it's just really important to remember that if you do see a sea snake, particularly one that might be washed up on the beach, never ever touch it. Now these snakes are very placid, they're very reluctant to bite, but we've got to remember that the venom they possess is very, very toxic and if they do feel threatened or scared, they can give you a life-threatening bite. So I'm gonna handle this sea snake to point some features out to you, but we need to remember firstly, this is a captive bred sea snake, so it's quite used to me interacting with it. And secondly, I do have a lot of reptile experience. So I will handle this snake cautiously, but I certainly would not recommend anyone else would touch a sea snake. That's really important information. Okay, so let's get to our talent down here. And this is one of the sea snakes that we have bred here at Reef HQ. This is a beautiful olive sea snake and it's one of three. Now these guys were born in April 29, so they're just coming up to three months of age. And you can see it's only a baby, but my goodness, it's a good size, it's big. And the reason for that is that olive sea snakes actually do give birth to very large babies. In fact, when these were born, they're live bearers, they don't lay eggs. They were about 100 grams in weight and about 50 centimetres in length. So if you think about that, about half a metre in length and 100 grams in weight, that's a very large baby. Now a lot of people say, why are they so big? Uh, and one of the theories behind that is because they invest more in fewer larger babies. So in other words, the survival rate of those babies is increased by making them larger. You'll tend to find that snakes that have large litters, there's a very high mortality rate. So one might survive, many, many might pass away. Whereas with these ones, they have fewer babies and the success rate is actually higher for them. Now these sea snakes, these olive sea snakes are fantastic. I'm gonna point a couple of features out. You'll notice here, the tail is quite specialized. The reason I say that, if you look at it, particularly if I look from the top down, you can see it's a very paddle-like shape. And that's because it literally is a paddle. Now what happens when the sea snake swims, it moves that tail from side to side, that actually propels the sea snake forward. And that's designed and modified for the life that sea snakes have in the marine environment. Now sea snakes are actually very, very closely related to our land snakes. In fact, they're called a front fanged venomous snake, which we call the family a lapid. So in other words, sea snakes are very closely related to the snakes like cobras, like tiger snakes, like black snakes, like taipans. They're very similar in the sense that they have those fangs at the front of the mouth, not the back like some people might have told you. And they are small fangs, but also that their venom is very toxic, just like those other snakes. Having said that, these sea snakes are reluctant to bite. And in fact, 
divers that go out on the reef, and particularly around the Yongala and places like that, you can actually come across these snakes quite regularly that will actually come up to divers and are actually very, very curious. So these guys actually will come out to divers, have a look at what's going on, because believe it or not, in the marine environment, we look quite odd to them, and they'll come and look at us, and they're actually very, very curious. There's been no case of someone dying from a sea snake in Australia, not because they're not capable, but because of the fact that they really are reluctant to bite. Now, I've got to say, if you do want to come and see these sea snakes at Reef HQ, please come down because one of these sea snake babies is on display. They are fantastic. They're really, really amazing to see and it's a really rare opportunity. So hopefully we'll see you down here and we can show one of these babies off to you. So how cool was that? She looked just like her parents, didn't she? Because when they're born, they look just like an adult sea snake, just a little bit smaller. Now if we have a look back at our worksheets again, sea snakes are another one of the animals that we're going to have a look at. So let's see if we can answer the questions about the sea snakes now. So firstly, are sea snakes born from an egg or are they born live? That's right, they're born live, unlike most other reptiles that do hatch out of an egg. Do the parents look after the sea snakes when they're born? No, they don't. So as soon as they are born, those little snakes have to look completely after themselves. But do they look like their parents when they're first born? Yes, they do. So they look just like their parents. Now we might have a look at a marine mammal now. So out on the reef, we have dugongs. Dugongs are a type of mammal. Do you know another species that is a mammal as well? That's right, it's us, humans. We are also a mammal. So we have a few similarities with dugongs. Now, did your parents look after you when you were first born? They did, didn't they? Dugongs are the same. So when those little calves first are born, the mum's gonna look after them for about two years, sometimes a little bit more, until those juveniles can look after themselves. And also when they're first born, they look just like their parents as well, but just a little bit smaller. But in those dugongs, they are pretty cool. And again, they are an animal that's on our worksheet. So let's have a look at that worksheet one more time and see if we can answer the questions about dugongs. So let's see if you guys can answer them. Are dugongs born live or do they hatch from an egg? That's right, they are born live, just like humans are. And do the parents look after those juveniles once they're born as well? They do, absolutely. They're gonna look after them for a few years till they can look after themselves. And did those juveniles look just like their parents? Yes, they did, just a little bit smaller. Now we've got one more animal that we're gonna have a look at today. And that is another type of shark. So we saw the leopard sharks earlier. They were born from eggs. But now we've got some black tip reef sharks. And black tip reef sharks are born live. Because black tip reef sharks are a type of shark that never ever stops swimming. Because if they stopped swimming, they would stop breathing. So the female black tips, they can't stop to lay an egg. So they have to keep swimming and give birth to a live shark. And then when those black tips are first born, they start swimming straight away. Because if they didn't start swimming, they wouldn't start breathing. So black tips are pretty cool. They are born live. They look just like their parents, but a little bit smaller. And the parents don't actually look after them either. As soon as the female gives birth to that baby, she swims away. Most of the time, she will also give birth to the baby in what's known as a nursery area. Things like mangroves, because those roots in those mangrove systems are really good at protecting those little juveniles while they are very, very small. Now we've come to the end of our Growing Up on the Reef lesson today. I hope that you have all learned something about how different animals grow up out on the reef. 
For anyone that didn't download that worksheet right at the start, make sure you have a look at it now and see if you can try and answer those questions yourselves. Thank you so much for joining our Growing Up on the Reef lesson today. Keep an eye on our Facebook as we continue to bring you lots more educational lessons. As I said, I hope you've all enjoyed our lesson today. Hope you've all learnt something and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again next time. Bye everyone!